159 page agreement, five annexes. What do we have included in that? What the world powers, we have to remember, Matt, that this is not a uh, bilateral agreement, it's a unilateral agreement between Tehran and the world powers, as our colleague here said in the studio, the P5 plus one group. What was agreed under that was for Iran to scale back its nuclear program so that instead of several months, it would take the country an entire year to yield enough material to produce a nuclear bomb. They filled some of their sites with concrete. And this is an important point to make, even though you disagree with the IAEA. This is an international body that was previously, prior to the deal being clinched in 2015, approved by all the member players. And so they have been uh, conducting rigorous inspections inside the country, sending inspectors. This is unprecedented in Francois. You have to remember, no other country has been exposed to this kind of rigorous inspection other than Tehran before the JCPOA was clinched. And something that often comes to the equation we hear, uh, certainly from those that are anti uh, the Iran deal, those that want regime change. However, where you want to look at it is they start discussing the country's regional behaviors, which indeed are questionable. We're talking about Iran mm. propping the regime of Bashar al-Assad, its involvement in Yemen, Hezbollah, what have you. The point is, there's a problem of trust here. And this goes back to the 50s, when there was a coup d'etat against Iran's democratically elected prime minister Mossadegh at the time. And it continues to date. Washington didn't deliver its end of the bargain. How do you expect the Iranians are going to come to the negotiating table and negotiate JCPOA round two?